so here this is at Stevens Knoll looking out there onto East Cemetery Hill and you can see the famous gatehouse uh, to the cemetery there at Gettysburg and so you can see how open this terrain is um, onto the approach to Cemetery Hill um, and how effective this elevated position, which hopefully the sun doesn't blow the camera out here, but um, this knoll here, and you can see that's the monument to uh, Henry Slocum up there. I would call it a monument to mediocrity. He was never much of a commander in the Civil War. Um, and then the, the monument there with the artillery is to the 5th Main Battery, which held this position and poured double canister fire down into the flank of the Confederate troops that were assaulting East Cemetery Hill because they would have come through this open field here and you would see it's right down their flank uh, marching up the hill here and then eventually as they curve on towards the gatehouse there you'd be firing into their rear and so uh, the heavy um, double canister that these guys were unloading into the Confederate lines as they approached Cemetery Hill um, helped to keep the Confederates from completely capturing the position or from uh, adding on follow-up attacks although all of the 11th Corps units, um, you can see the various stone walls at the base of the hill there. Um, there were 11th Corps regiments that were there that basically all just ran back up the hill that were captured uh, by the attacking Confederates and uh, ended up um, being pretty much worthless in the defense at the base of the hill. And so the Union troops at the top of the hill ended up having to, to hold off the Confederates who briefly breached the line um, up onto Cemetery Hill there, but we're eventually repulsed. So now I'm uh, kind of in the swale here between Cemetery Hill. You can see a little closer to East Cemetery Hill and the, and the cemetery gatehouse and see the cemetery itself over there. Um, looking back up towards Stevens Knoll, uh, where the, the Slocum Monument is obscured by that tree there. Um, but Stevens Knoll is kind of a little knoll between, and I didn't point this out in my previous video, but back behind Stevens Knoll, um, you know, behind the direction that I was facing in my earlier video, is Culp's Hill. You're coming down from Culp's Hill up there. And uh, one of the things that was never particularly clear to me, um, especially in the simulations of this battle that I've played, is why the Confederates didn't exploit kind of this open position because you can see behind me here there's no real terrain features I mean Cemetery Hill is over there Culp's Hill over there on the other side of Stevens Knoll and there's kind of nothing um, right in this gap here and uh, where the rest of the Union position was at that point seems like it would have been easier for the Confederates to get through than to either take Culp's Hill or to hit uh, Cemetery Hill so one of those questions about the battle why more wasn't done Although, standing right here is the 33rd Massachusetts Monument, so there was at least this regiment here. Um, I'm not sure if this is one of the ones that broke and ran uh, when the Confederates began their assault on East Cemetery Hill or not. Um, most of the regiments have memorials on the battlefield, even the ones that cut and ran, uh, and they didn't perform very well. So, And of course, they're not going to put that on their monuments, so you kind of have to look that up in the actual... Uh, reports and history of the battle. So, um, you know, maybe the 33rd Massachusetts was one of several other regiments that were here. I don't see any other markers um, in this gap here. It's pretty much just the um, main battery up there, and then the 33rd Massachusetts is the first marker that you see, and their, their flank markers over there in the distance, that's their right flank. Um, so, beyond that right flank marker, and until you reach Stevens Knoll over there, there's apparently nothing, so, you know, one of those questions, why didn't the Confederates aim for the gap between these hills and uh, try and exploit that? I'm not really sure why. Now I'm at the base of East Cemetery Hill, looking up there towards the Howard and Hancock monuments. Um, both of them lay claim to the quote-unquote genius of selecting this position as the position to be held at all costs. Um, but I would give the edge to Howard. He was on the field first and left a entire division of the 11th Corps in reserve on, uh, actually, well, maybe it was just a brigade. Because the 11th Corps was kind of shorthanded when they arrived, but he, 
they kept the brigade or division on Cemetery Hill um, as a reserve and uh, recognized the importance of the position of a large flat hill that was perfect for artillery placements. Um, and then, as you can see here, it was relatively free of trees, so it was a perfect position to set up and defend. Um, all these monuments along here at the base of it are our 11th Corps units um, that were positioned here to defend the hill um, from further Confederate attacks on July 1st. Um, Hancock did not believe these troops were reliable, and largely they were not. Uh, once the Confederates assaulted Cemetery Hill on the night of July 2nd, um, most of these 11th Corps units at the base of the hill here all just scrambled back up the hill um, to the safety of the Union artillery positions and nearly gave up the entire position. So, uh, yeah, not, not a great showing, even though they all have monuments here. And some, uh, like the, that's the 17th Connecticut down there, um, they have a monument also over on Barlow's Knoll, like why you would have uh, monuments at the two positions that your regiment basically broke and ran uh, is, <laughs> is a question. But like I said before, this is Gettysburg. Everybody gets a monument because they were just here and the whole side won. It's their their uh, individual contributions can sort of be glossed over. So um, this is the 54th New York here. You can see after Gettysburg, they were shipped off to Charleston, South Carolina, where they spent the rest of the war. So. Uh, yeah, the 11th Corps disbanded after Gettysburg because there wasn't much of it left, and what was left um, was not particularly reliable. So, um, very good, uh, rather beautiful terrain here, but not great um, for launching an assault up the open slopes of a hill bristling with artillery. So, you can see why. Uh, it was a daunting position for the Confederates to try and take, although they nearly did on the night of July 2nd, but um, not enough support and that withering uh, flanking canister fire from Stevens Knoll over there um, pretty much sealed their fate.